Hello everyone and welcome to the Ground Plan Master Funders webinar. My name is Craig and on behalf of the Ground Plan team, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. We know time is precious, so we're certainly not going to waste yours today. Over the next half an hour, I'm going to be showcasing Ground Plan and showing you where it fits into the estimating process and beyond. After that, we have a man that needs no introduction, Zane Britton, president of the Northland Master Plumbers. Zane will be talking about his experiences in imp implementing software into his business. He's got a wealth of, of knowledge there, so something to look forward to. At Ground Plan, we roughly talk to about seven to 800 plumbing businesses each year, mostly from Australasia, from tier one uh, right through to one-man bands. The first questions that we ask is basically, how are you estimating now? And um, which is usually met with met with a, a short, awkward silence. And then once we get them talking, we hear things like, um, you know, I print plans, I mark them up with highlighters. I then transfer those to a spreadsheet um, or I've got a per point rate. So I just count up all the fixtures and things like that. We do talk to a lot of people who have job management softwares where they've already created pre-builds, kits, task lists, and those sorts of things. And then they just basically enter the values into those. And then that populates a, um, a quote with all of the materials and the labor that are involved. Also, like from, from one end to the other, we talk to people who basically say to me, look, estimating is in my head. I've been a plumber for, you know, uh, 40 years. I just look at a job and I can price it. But a lot of the times those people are looking to sort of pass on that information that's in their head over to um, sons or daughters who are looking to sort of take over the business or they're finding that, that like um, the old school way of just looking at a job isn't, isn't quite working anymore. Last but not least, we also talk to a lot of people who are just starting out in business and basically call us in a panic and saying they have absolutely no idea how to estimate, which is... <laughs> yeah, very, very, very common. And um, I usually sort of start by just getting them to sort of draw what they're actually going to do. And that way, from those lengths, we can sort of start looking at materials at least, and then, you know, sort of applying materials and that sort of stuff. So in Ground Plan, we have integrations with Simpro, Aeroflow, and a scorer. Okay, so what that means is that, um, as I was sort of alluding to before, some uh, a lot of times people have pre-build or kits or assemblies set up. And once they're linked with ground plan, we are just simply counting and measuring using those um, preset rates with um, applied materials and those sorts of things. We have a lot of businesses that use Zero or QuickBooks, and that just means that you can have an inventory and you can actually just build up a little bit of, or, or a few rates or at least just quantify the materials that you're working from vicariously through their um, catalogs. For the businesses that don't have those softwares, look, we... As I say, look, a lot of people will just do the counting and measuring and ground plan and then add it into their spreadsheet. We've also got the ability to import spreadsheets as what we call takeoff templates. And um, as I say, I'll, I'll sort of explain more as I go, but we, we, we really do sort of talk to people from um, all ends of the spectrum. So let's just jump into a, a project here. What I've done is I've already created a project. I've uploaded the plans and and set up stages. So in ground plan, a stage is just a way of grouping your items together. So in this case, we're doing a, a, a drainage takeoff. And um, and I've also populated all of these counts and measurements. And in this instance, I've just put a per meter rate or a per item rate. But I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go. So to start with, I've just gone in and I've also set the scale to 1 to 100. And we're ready to go. So if I just start with down pipes, for instance, I'm just going to click on that. And I just simply make my way around the plan. And I'm just dropping that symbol there that uh, my mouse is controlling. And every time I click on it, you can just see super simple stuff. Over on the left-hand side, it's just counting um, under the stage. So I'll just grab my next item, which is uh, my FGs. And I'm just going to go ahead and just start placing those like so. And it really is just a case that we're just going to sort of click around and we're just going to place the items that we need to on, on the plan. So now it's time to start measuring our 100 mil DWV PVC. So I'm just going to click on that item. I just click to start. I click to change directions as many times as I need to. I double click to finish. Clicking to start, clicking to change directions, double clicking to finish, making my way around until I've sort of got to the 
other end where I've finished. And as you can see, you know, within 30 seconds, we've just gone through and we've just quantified that there is uh, you know, 70.15 metres um, to, to consider um, when we're doing our estimates. Sometimes people already have um, within the measurement of that 100mm DWV a certain allowance for uh, junctions and, and 45 degree bends and those sorts of things. But if, if, if it's a case that you prefer to count those separately, again, we just grab our count and we just start placing those on the plan like so. And it really is just a case of however you're sort of doing things now, you just use ground plan to sort of go ahead and, and do those things either by counting or measuring like so. And then for our 45 degree bends, we'll just sort of double click on all the 90 degree angles that we see here. And that's just a case of quantifying you know, some of the materials that are going to go in like so. So... If we were using a job management software, all of these measurements would be linked to to the builds that are in those. And in which case, now we we would just push a button and we would push that through for an instant quote over over there. If in this case, what I've done is I've just put a per point rate on there. So if I went to the quantities page, what we can just see are, are these are the fictitious prices that I've put on there, and um and we've just got our unit cost and then the overall total. Then we have stage totals and then project totals. So that way, if you're sort of running a, a quite a large project and you're using uh, per point or per meter rates, it's just super simple to be able to enter those in here and we just go through and um, and, and populate an estimate as we're going through and doing the, um, the, the takeoff. So a lot of the times we might not have plans that we can go through and, and measure or trace out what other people have essentially you know drawn for us so we are very big on the ability to sort of design plans and that is for necessary for a number of reasons like number one a design could be the exact same thing as a takeoff except you're not tracing those um, lines out but also they're really handy for sort of council consent a lot of our customers actually hand those um, designs on to their own staff just to sort of show where everything's going and what's been allowed for so let's jump into one and i am going to pop into this page here so this is just a an architectural plan of that same house and i'm just going to and, and essentially what we've got in ground plan is we have a whole lot of editing tools that are going to help us just to basically make this um, design um, stand out a little bit more so it's really easy to read for everyone involved. So on the right-hand side, these are editing tools. In English, what that means is that they can edit the plan. And so I'm just going to grab my eraser and I am going to swap to square mode. And I'm just going to start to erase parts of the plan that aren't really necessary for me to sort of see, just so that I can see the beautiful plumbing design that I'm about to do a little bit more clearer. And I'll just make my way around like so until I've sort of tidied that up to the to the level that I want to really. Okay, so again, we're just doing the same thing that we did last time. I'm just going to grab um, those down pipes and I'm just going to start placing them on the plan. So luckily enough for me, this one does have sort of them drawn up. But if they don't, it's just a case that you're just plotting where you know that they're going to be installed um, based on site visits um, or, or other plans and those sorts of things. So I just make my way through and I um, I go through and I count all those. With design, ground plans work really hard just to sort of give something special in terms of just like an ordinary, an ordinary line and those sorts of things. So with this measurement, what we've got is we have labeling. So we have the ability to go through, we can add a label, we can um, muck around with the text size, the frequency. And so that just means that, you know, for a, a, a sewer line, we can have SS in there or we can have 100 mil PVC, whatever you want. We just basically put the, show the label like so and um, and, and we start measuring. So let's jump in and I'm going to, I'm just going to do the first run, which is going to go to the stormwater pit, which I'm just going to run like so clicking to start, clicking to finish, and then I'm just going to make my way around like that, cross in there, and I'll make my way through to that last one. Hopefully this is not the worst design you've ever seen, but it's just a case that however you do things now, we're just going to sort of go through and follow those lines and, and basically place everything in, uh, as you can see here. I... Um, 
think I've jumped the gun here and forgot my FGs on this one. So no problem. We'll just go through and retrospectively pop those in by clicking on FG and I'll just pop that in and I will just extend that one out a little bit there. So as, as I say, just a, a really quick and easy way to sort of go through and draw things up. It's a case that, like, obviously I've just chosen drainage because it's nice and easy, but we, we have a lot of people that do internal sort of sewage um, set outs and all of those sorts of things. So whatever you're sort of needing to do, we can sort of take care of. In the editing tools, there's, there's other features so that we can sort of pretty this up and also sort of make it really relevant. So I've, I'm just going to go ahead and pop a legend on the page, which means that um, I've got all of the measurements if I want to, or I can turn them off. But essentially, it just means that I can control, it, it just means I can sort of control what's, uh, basically what's been shown on the plan and then we've got a bit of a key just to sort of show what each symbol represents we have title blocks so that way if this is something that you're presenting to your customer this is always a, a popular thing to be able to do is just to go ahead and just put your own title block on there like so in terms of like other items we do have the text tool so if you do need to write something on the plan like you know this is where the uh, stormwater pit is going we um, just go we just go right ahead and we just basically pop that on the plan and, and say right that's that's over there we've got clouds and annotations and things like that if you want to get a bit fancy and sort of jazz things up a bit and essentially it's just a case that like I was saying before with a lot of people that are, are new to estimating or even you know sort of old hands at it these are real measurements so they can have uh, materials applied to them, just like um, what we did in the takeoff. In fact, it's exactly the same. So whether we have plans that we need to sort of measure from or whether we're sort of doing the design um, ourselves, it, it really doesn't matter because the, the point is, is that we have a really accurate read on all the materials that are going into an installation. Look, just some really quick examples there, guys. So we've got things like this and I'm sure Ben Main's seen one this once or twice uh, before, but what we've got is an as-built uh, drawn plan for council consent, uh, where we can sort of basically convert something like that into something like that, where we've just gone through. And again, rather than just sort of drawing on a PDF, I've just downloaded that form, and we've just drawn the well, uh, the dwelling, I should say. We've put measurements in there, and we can clearly see what, what's, what's drainage, uh, what's sewer, and so on and so forth, and also sort of filled out the form using the text tool. So, look, a pretty popular choice, and um, I do know that I'm talking to, um, I never forget talking to someone in Canberra, and um, that person said to me that I, I pay someone $400 to do that, and I do 250 houses a year, so... I really should have done the maths before I did the webinar, but um, I'm sure it's it's many, many, many thousands of dollars. So, um, yeah, definitely something um, cool to sort of be able to present. Because in New Zealand, we're not all in, in big cities. We we have a lot of rural jobs. So there's, there might be times where you don't have a specific PDF or a set of plans or at an established house or something like that. And I don't want to go too far into this because I know Zane's going to allude to it. We do have the ability also to load up near map images or Google map images. What we need, if you want a, a bit of a read on materials and those sorts of things, or or you know, to, just to make sure that we've got the links right, is that usually they'll just have a little key here, so we can manually measure that to sort of, and we know that that's ten meters, and then we're able to sort of set a scale uh, to the plan, and then we know, you know, um, basically that 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 scale is is correct, and again. Just bring this one up. I think it's that one there. Um, again, it's just a case that we can convert those into something like that. So just something really cool. Look, this is just, as I say, I, I copped out uh, and did a drainage plan because I found that it was the easiest for me to do. But we have people doing all sorts of things like, um, uh, what's it called? Oh, I've lost the word, IRR, irrigation. Um, um, or you know pumps and things like that. So they're just grabbing that that image, setting the scale, and then they're going through and they're able to sort of do a design, a takeoff, and everything like that, all at the same time. Cool. So in terms of takeoff design, you know, a bit of a merge between the two. That is just 
a really quick example um, today of just showing you some of the different ways that people use ground plan to sort of get those really accurate reads. Another thing that people really enjoy about ground plan, and this is something that I discovered, I, I used to help out with a master plumber's uh, estimating course over in Queensland. And um, one day there was a, a guy in the back and basically he hadn't seen anything the whole class. And he said, oh, I'd be really good if we could just do set out points. So we've got a whole lot of features around that. And I know it's it's a, it's a pretty you know popular thing around the place. So let me just show you what that entails. So when I say a set out point that means that all of all of the drains that are going into the sewer system underneath the slab or even outside of it so essentially we've got a plan like this an, an architectural plan and what we're going to do is we're just going to start to to basically plot where all of our stack work is going to go and then we're going to place measurements on that and and basically as i say uh, you get a really get a really accurate estimate of exactly where everything's going so if i just start off by clicking on my wc or my toilet i'm just going to bring in a grid tool and that's just to sort of show you that we can have a grid placed over the plan i've set mine to 0.45 um, basically because i know these plans pretty well and i know that the drain for the toilet gets set at uh, exactly 0.45 meters out from the brickwork so i'm just going to wheel in i'm going to place the brickwork exactly on one of those lines center the, the the toilet like so and then I go ahead and place it we also have count labeling so some to look we could put a legend on here and they're going to be color coded so we're going to know that the green ones are the toilets and and the red ones are the sinks and everything like that but just so you know we do have labeling as well so if we wanted to um, just write in here that, that this is a WC we do have that ability to sort of write that on on our items and I'm just going to place that exactly where that's going to go but today I'm just going to do four so that I don't uh, end up boring you all half to death. I'll just label them as I go so that we can see the effect at the end. So that one's going to be a shower, which I will choose this one here. And, and essentially, naturally, as you know, just wherever that's going um, in the center or anything like so, we're just going to go ahead and, and place that there like that. I'm going to grab my bath again, just label it up really quickly. pop that one there for wherever that one's going and last but not least we'll just chuck in a sink again i like to color code it because i like the fact of people knowing what stack work is going to go in um, underneath so that you can come up in that correct size rather than having them all a generic um, color so last but not least i'm just going to pop in here my sink i'm going to wheel over to that part of the plan place that exactly where i want to go so now that we've gone through and we've actually set out all of our points, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab out of the editing tools, the ruler tool. Okay, so again, I'm a bit, um, or well, ADHD, I think you could say, and I, I have to sort of have them color coded. You wouldn't have to, but it's just a case that it's really quick and easy just to sort of go through. We just swap out that color. I'm going to wheel in with my mouse. That stage is just getting a bit annoying, so I'm just going to push that off to the side for a second. and. Look, whether we use the grid um, lines to sort of help us get those things straight, it's absolutely up to you. But we do have sort of really good shortcut keys. So if I'm, I'm holding shift, which means that that's going to hold that to a, a 15 degree increment, I just go ahead and I just start plotting exactly where those lines are, are going. I'm going to wheel in and get to the center of that one. I know that it's 45 out from the edge. So I just go ahead and place that in there like so. The next one that we're going to do is going to be our shower. So again, I'll just swap that color out really quickly. And this is, yeah, just a part of, I guess, plumbing or just even like um, trades in general um, that are, are basically entering items in that can be a little bit of a nightmare to do on uh, pen and paper. Whereas, you know, being able to digitize it, it just means that we know that we've we've got it as, accu an, as accurate as a read as the, the scale on the plan. So... I do apologize. I realize it's probably getting a little bit tedious. Let me finish it off and I'm, I am guarantee it'll be worth the look at the end. Um, so last couple here and I'm just going to fire that one in as you can see here and race that one in and that one there um, to get those like so. And last but not least, the bath, which is in beautiful brown. And I'll just go ahead and place those last ones in there. So definitely... A little bit of a time saver as opposed to doing it 
on on pen and paper. But as I say, look, the accuracy just is unbeatable in in terms of doing it manually or doing it digitally. Excellent. So we've got those done now. Now, it's a little bit hard to sort of see those on the plan. So naturally, the next thing we're going to do is grab the eraser tool, which I will swap to Freeform. And we're going to just take out all of the walls and the floors and everything because naturally they're not going to be there when we're on site and we're actually installing these drains. So it's just a case that I just leave the shell because that's uh, where my set out points are going from. Or if, if it's a larger site, there might be pegs and stuff like that that you guys are, are using to sort of do that. I'm just going to make my way around, erase that off the plan like so. And then what we'll be left with is just a, a nice clear picture of exactly you know what is what's going on so they're labeled here in terms of shower bath um, sink and all of those sorts of things but another really easy thing for us to do is just to go ahead and pop a um, a legend on the page like so um, and I'll just reinstate that stage for a second get rid of that so we can sort of see what's going on and so now what we've got is we've got a color-coded set of set out points we've got all of the digital measurements ready to go we can save that as a pdf and if i click that button essentially whatever device you're on it's just going to download onto ready to attach to an email and send off to the um your your um staff and all of those sorts of things so as i say just a a quick little look at some of the other aspects apart from design and and measuring look i'm just going to finish off with something that is was really, really sought after from uh, a lot of different plumbing businesses. We received literally hundreds of requests for this. And so all it is is that if we receive revisions, we just upload those revisions um, into ground plan under another group. And what happens is, is naturally, usually what happens is we're going to have to go through and do the whole takeoff again just to figure out what the differences are between the original and you know essentially what's going on now. If I just hide that stage for a second, what we've got is we. I'm just going to compare this plan with another plan that we've got here, which is going to be this one like so. So what happens is, is this is just going to appear black and white. And the reason for that is because there is no difference between one plan and the other. And, and if this was the case, happy days, we don't have to make any changes or do any revisions or anything like that. But if I was to unalign those, what you'll see is that basically whatever is blue was on the original plan but is not on the new set of plans whatever's red is on the uh, new plan but not on the old one then we can go ahead and start moving things around um, in terms of our measurements just to sort of recalibrate everything take out counts add counts if we need to or any of those measurements that we've got and then from there we can go into the plans page and we can actually revise those so what that means is that i can slip out the old plan slip in the new plan and and basically we're working with the most up-to-date set so look just something cool to finish with um, also just as a side note when people are sort of designing two-story houses especially um, our plumbing customers they will sort of overlay the top floor with the the uh, ground floor just so that they can sort of see where the cavities are and, and how they're going to actually get downstairs um, to, to to basically join to the plumbing systems uh, down there so Sorry, just excuse me. I will just... Okay, cool. Look, that was it from me in terms of um, my my part today. We, if you're interested, we offer two... Uh, sorry, we offer free two-week trials. Within 24 hours of sign-up, a trade expert will call to introduce themselves, talk about what's important to you and your business, and then we'll get you booked in for a, a bit of a screen share so that we can um, show you around. Look, once you decide that you want to go ahead, we offer free training. Um, and that training is from our award-winning uh, training team who are really excellent. The girls are really good. they very clued up. They know all about all of the integrations that we've got and um, certainly know a lot more than me anyway. So thank you um, for, for listening. And now I'm going to hand it over to Zane um, to share some of his experiences and Zane, mate, if we could just, I'm just going to railroad it straight away. Are we, would you be able to sort of explain some of the most obvious benefits of, of using ground plan? The, the biggest thing is productivity. Um, the productivity gains around it, and I'll explain a bit more there, is one input, multiple outputs. Um, what that means is, is you see Craig dragging a line across the paper there and gaining lots of measurements and different 
bills of quantities out the other end. Now, say the job's accepted, the job moves forward, you now have a BOQ ready to go for your client and your tradespeople, you also have a marked up drawing for your tradesmen to go to site. That is probably the biggest thing for me. The second thing would be presentation and how this appears to my customers versus my competitors. Lots of our customers, especially uh, the the B2C customers, um, don't ultimately know what we're up to and what we're doing in the plumbing. And this is a good way to show them insight. If you want them to open their wallets and, and accept these projects for us, we really need to be able to show them a good presentation and what we're doing prior for them to accept them, just to give them everyone an understanding about what's happening. Now, that's been hugely successful with us. We have actually had calls for feedback um, to say, we've never seen this and can we keep having this? What is it called? Um, so that's another really good point for us. Now, the, the other one coming out of this, there's always changes on jobs. There's always, uh, we've got to remain flexible. We are a service trade at the end of the day and customers come up with other ideas or have things they want to do. So the flexibility of variation is is a key one for us. So we, we're all looking at the same plan. We can easily modify that plan and get it off to a customer, an engineer or a client to say, is this what we're thinking about? Is this what we're looking at? And then they can approve that right there and then. We've already got the changes and the numbers associated back to the quote, and we can make that variation very, very easily. Those would be my three top um, reasons, Craig, for sure. Thank you very much. Now, another thing I'd, I'd like to talk about is the ability to be able to drill down into the job a bit more. So let's say we've done a high-level quote with just fixture rates and maybe some meter rates there. But it is a bit more complex, um, but we've managed to get the pricing through a fixture. And when we get to this job, say there's 150 toilets or a few other things, we can actually go through very quickly at that point if a BOQ hasn't been done and really drill in and make line items to suit those individual quantities we're trying to, we're trying to gain, where we can actually produce a BOQ out of, out of a plan set of a quote that's already won within 15, 20 minutes. And then we can issue set the stages out to suit the different suppliers that those uh, quantities are going to go to, and we could have that print out, then issue it to supply where they've got a perfect quantity of, of what we need and the right purchase sort of attached to it. Um, that's a huge gain for us as well um, in, the, in the productivity sides of things. Um, I express too, while you are using this, take, uh, take use of the Zoom. Uh, definitely zoom right in as much as you can to very center your your points to be your, your to be as accurate as you can, and um, don't try and just leave it as one view. Know that you can zoom right in and get more accurate, and you can really see a bit more detail. Another thing I wanted to just add to there was um, the count length and area tools then, and and how they work. So the count is obviously we're quantifying individual amounts. The length is obviously the length, and then the area is. A certain area. Now the prices need to be built behind the scenes for those to work, or you can just end up in ground plan with a quantity version of that. Thank you, everyone, um, for for joining us today. We we are really proud to be partners with uh, Master Plumbers, and it's 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 so awesome just to see you all here. Zane, you're the man. I really appreciate your time. Always, always, always good to deal with you. Um, so look, thanks very much, everyone, and have a great day. Yeah.